The University of Michigan was founded in 1817 and claims a 200-year-old tradition of excellence. The university's mission declares a devotion to helping leaders and citizens who will change the present and enrich the future. The University of Michigan was ranked 27th by U.S. News on their ranking of best colleges in America. Part of the Big Ten Conference, the University of Michigan football team has the most all-time wins and the highest winning percentage in college football history. With over 900 student organizations to get involved in, nearly 20% of the University of Michigan students are affiliated with Greek organizations. Josh Levine graduated from the University of Michigan in the spring of 2013 with a degree in sports management. Josh was involved in Greek life through Theta Chi fraternity and served as the manager for the football team. His family and friends described him as friendly and charming. After graduating from the University of Michigan, Josh went back to his high school alma mater to coach baseball and substitute teach. Shortly after, he took a sales job in Chicago as an account executive in the commercial group at North American Corporation. Five percent of incoming freshmen during the fall of 2010 were diagnosed with attention deficit disorder prior to attending college. The misuse and abuse of Adderall has a long list of side effects including a sense of euphoria. A false sense of confidence. Trouble sleeping. Rapid heartbeat. Loss of appetite. Weight loss. And blurred vision. A study on college students found that 34% of participants reported using prescription drugs for non-medical <coughs> reasons. An overwhelming majority of those students felt that it was not dangerous. So in the past, yes, I have used study drugs to get uh, a leg up on schoolwork just to kind of give me that extra edge to make myself more competitive and you know prepare myself for my classes better and even cramming for an overnight test it, you, it helps me stay up throughout the night and kind of get that last minute cram session for the test. Um, do I know that using it is illegal? Yes, but at the same time I do feel as if I've never abused the drugs to an extent to where I need them. I only use them in a last case scenario. Um, I guess my experience with study drug abuse here at USM would be that people definitely use it. It's definitely a prevalent thing. I've seen it as far as people paying for it and using it and abusing their own prescriptions or even people with prescriptions going to somebody with a higher prescription just because they don't think theirs is enough. But I think that it is on this campus because, it's on every college campus, but because people think that if they can get the work done in a more efficient amount of time and not take as long, or they can stay up longer and finish some work, or they retain it better, of course they're going to take a magic pill that they think their friend is having an advantage by having a prescription by. But um, yeah, so my experience with it specifically though in the past few years, I guess my friends definitely have abused it. Um, being in a major where you have very long hours, long nights, early mornings, people will take it to strive through all night or to get up and have the energy for the next day because they didn't sleep that night or whatever it may be to take a test, to study for a test. But um, I've seen it work and I've seen it backfire on people. I've seen people who shouldn't be taking a prescription for it take it and then just not know how to act because the prescription wasn't theirs in the first place and so you know medical professional didn't prescribe it for them therefore they're not aware of the side effects but um, definitely those who have it prescribed should be taking it for them because they're prescribed for a reason. I do think it is a normal part of college culture it is becoming more normal um, and that is a, is a sad thing because it is still an illegal substance to, to use if you're not prescribed to it but at the same time around my sophomore and or junior year it was becoming more of a, a, a trend, like, oh, you've got to stay up all night, so I'm going to take this to, you know, get through the busy day and help me into the next day when it comes to, you know, having a student job, uh, um, student activities that you're involved with. It kind of, like, will focus your attention onto those tasks instead of, you know, procrastinating so long. But, you know, now I think with the media portraying it is, as, of course, it is an illegal drug, people are coming to realize, like, this is actually something that shouldn't be abused, but at the same time, some people still use it as that last case scenario. Yes, I do think it's become a normalized part of college culture, and I actually think the further I get in my degree, the more normalized it's becoming, just because people are expected to step out of their comfort zones more, 
and focus harder on their schoolwork and put in more hours and the content's getting harder and you know you got to get that internship you got to get that externship you got to get that job and to do that you have to have good grades so people are starting to stress because they didn't form the study habits that they should have in the beginning so they're down to the wire and hey their friend has this pill that really helps so I think people are are apt to go ahead and take that magic pill or take that Adderall or take that Vyvanse to help them get what they want. They think, oh, it's just one pill, it's not a big deal. But, it, I mean, it is a big deal because there are health risks and legal risks that are involved because I think students have a grasp sort of on the health risk involved because they know it's a stimulant and they attribute that to cocaine and they attribute the same signs and symptoms of overdose of cocaine to Adderall and Vyvanse, whereas it's not really the same, but they do know it's a stimulant, they do know that it jacks you up, it keeps you up, and it focuses you. But what they don't realize is that having somebody else's prescription in your possession or selling somebody else's prescription is a felony and you will be trialed as an adult and you will go to prison for doing that. So I don't think that they understand the severity of, oh, I took my friend's Adderall or, oh, I bought a $5 pill that's going to help me do this that my friend's been taking since he's 13, so it must not be that big of a deal. But, I mean, in the long run, it is a pretty big deal. And I guess as far as education goes and ensuring that students have the full broad spectrum of legal issues with it and health hazards with it, um, I've been to a few, like, forums sort of stuff when safety and health risks and stuff on campus and that those were mainly broad spectrum alcohol and drugs. I didn't really hone in on Adderall and Vyvanse and stimulant abuse, which I guess that should be more focused on in the future, but I, I mean, I wouldn't call it an epidemic, but it's definitely more prevalent than it was in the past. The Ohio State University is a leading institution in educating students on steady drug abuse. Ohio State College of Pharmacy partnered with the Cardinal Health Foundation to found the Generation Prescription Initiative. Generation Prescription Initiative provides easily accessible and free online educational resources. For faculty, staff, and students to use to spread the word on effects of abusing stimulant drugs. Online resources are presented as toolkits and include discussion points, scripts, posters, PowerPoints, and frequently asked questions. They begin the Generation Prescription University Conference in 2011. Inviting higher education professionals, students, and drug abuse prevention advocates to attend and participate in discussion about best practices surrounding the topic of substance abuse on college campuses. Miami University in Ohio implemented an extensive five-step screening process for students seeking ADHD medication. Students must first complete a phone triage with a staff member at Counseling Services. After the phone triage, students go through a brain booster workshop where they learn organizational and time management skills. After the workshops, students who continued the process will undergo an in-depth screening with a counseling services therapist. If the therapist finds a student eligible for ADHD medication, the student must then attend an ADHD workshop detailing how to properly take ADHD medicine and store it safely. Finally, students must undergo a medication evaluation with student counseling services in order to receive their medication. I think that people anticipate the fact that students that are involved aren't going to need things like that or are not going to use prescription drugs but because they think that they're a student that is somehow kind of beyond that. But I think what they'd be surprised about is the number of students who are really involved who rely on that to keep mm -hmm. them doing what they do every day um, because they're over involved and they have trouble balancing their academics with their involvement with their social lives and I think that Nobody thinks a whole lot in this generation about handing over your Adderall or whatever your prescription is to your friends or even selling it, which I think is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think that you would be surprised what people will do to stay on top. And, and in the past 10 years, I've just seen it grow that there's a, there are a lot of things that students will use to relax themselves. That's why marijuana is so commonplace in this generation. And so the opposite of that is there are lots of things that students will do to try to keep themselves keyed up. And that's where those medications come into, come into play. Now, I think the university looks at the use of 
those prescription medications is something that you have to treat in two ways. Um, you've got to deal with it from an education standpoint and you got to deal with it from a law enforcement standpoint. It's hard to think that you're going to have to make students realize the consequences of their actions. And as far as you, you have to on the law enforcement side, um, because it's so commonplace and that medication has just been there and been a part of their lives for so long or been a part of their friends' lives. It's not like they were 18 and came to college and started to use Adderall. They've been using Adderall since they were 10 and 12. And it's been something that they've been accustomed to. And so now that they, they have it, sharing it with their friends or selling it to their friends or taking it when they go out is no big deal. You know, and so it's really important that from the education standpoint, whether it's the counseling center or health services or, or other entities like the Dean of Students Office, that we deal with students where they are and kind of understand that that's been the mentality, that this is the most medicated generation that we've ever had. And so we have to know that they come with that baggage. Um, the law enforcement side is the fact that we have to deal with it when it happens. When it occurs, when you, when you deal with a residence hall situation with somebody um, realizes that their Adderall came up missing. And you know that somebody else took it because it was either they had to study for a test, they really wanted that, that focus because they wanted to clean their room. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting that you'll hear stuff like that pop up. It was not about the fact they had a big test. They needed to clean their room or clean their car or get things done. And so they took their friend's Adderall. Um, I think that we have to look at this generation and the fact that we've kind of enabled them to be this way. So now we've got to deal with them right here. So we see a lot of students um, for ADHD medications on campus. Um, ballpark, maybe five to ten a week if I had to guess. Um, that's just what I see. Um, and we have <clears throat> three other providers usually at one time um, at the clinic. And I would imagine they say about the same thing. Um, and so it's pretty uh, regular. It's not the most common thing that we see by any means on campus, but it is something that we do see. Um, I think ADHD is a definite, it's a real thing. Um, it's a diagnosis, obviously. It's something that people are gonna struggle with. Um, and it doesn't just affect academics. That's the thing that a lot of people think is, this is a school-age disease, that's not true. There's studies out there that show ADHD causes uh, more speeding tickets, loss of licensure, um, risk-taking behaviors behind the wheel. It's going to make these patients, when they get older, forget to take medications, other medicines, say like blood pressure medicine, cholesterol medicine, things like that. Um, you're going to miss dates. You're going to miss, like, I'm talking about like relationship dates. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to miss social functions, potentially meetings in the business world. It affects all areas of life. And so that's one of the kind of the myths is that it's a school age thing, where that's not entirely true. It affects everything. It's mm -hmm. just like high blood pressure. You always live with high blood pressure. It's the same thing with ADHD. You always live with it. It doesn't go away, per se. Okay. So before we will see a patient for ADHD medicine, we have a contract, um, which I've actually got right here with me. Um, and it's something that we feel, you know, we want to adhere to this. And, and we do adhere to this. All the providers do. Um, the number one thing that we want before we will treat anybody for this is records where they were specifically tested and diagnosed for with ADHD. Um, and that, that sometimes can be an issue with patients. Um, they come in and they've been taking the medicine for 10 years um, from their family doctor back home, but maybe never really truly got evaluated um, for the disorder. And we just want to make sure that we are because these medications can be abused, I don't, we don't like that they can be abused, but it's the truth. They can be abused, especially the short-acting medicines. Um, we want to make sure we're doing our due diligence at the same time. We want to make sure that the patient actually has the diagnosis, not something that they've um, just been treated for just you know, by their family doctor. Um, and so that's one of the big things that we ask for. We want records, and it's typically from a psychologist, or a psychiatrist that can do that, that can make that diagnosis. We don't make those diagnoses on campus. We send them somewhere to, to have that done if they don't already have it. Um, and so from then on, we make them come in once a month. Um, we just feel like on a college campus, we don't want to be distributing you know, a bunch of medications or a bunch of prescriptions all at one visit. 
we want to put our eyes on the patient every month and just make sure that they're doing okay, that they're stable on the medicine, that they're not having any side effects on the medicine. Um, and so that's w one thing that we're a little bit different in some other clinics. You might go and you might get three months or six months worth of prescriptions um, for these types of medicines. So those are two things that we um, are pretty strict about is that you come in every month. We're not just going to fill it over the phone. Hey, I need my refill. You have to come in and see somebody um, and that you actually have that specific testing and diagnosis. And it could be from childhood. It may be something that you need to do kind of before we'll write you any of those medicines. Um, I would say the other thing um, that we do, we try to write long-acting medicines. Long-acting medicines for ADHD are the standard of care. They're the gold standard. And so those are your Vyvanse's, your Adderall XR. Um, there's a new medicine called it Zenis um, that orally disintegrates on the tongue, some uh, patients like that. And so medicines like that, again, gold standard, they last about 8 to 12 hours, ideally, is what you want. Um, you don't have as much of a crash as you do on like the Adderall. Um, and so we're, where we can, insurances do kind of dictate some of that for us. Um, and so we want it to be cost effective. We also want to make sure we're doing the right thing to do um, in the gold standard of medicine.